want to take you through really quickly how to add thickness to a part, especially when you're dealing with something like a coating, a paint, or some other kind of component, or that is going to affect not only your size and tolerances, but perhaps you want to actually document it, show it, and, and illustrate it on the part. A really easy way to do this is to add a shell command. Now if you just go in and jump into the shell command and specify your thickness, like I'll do a thousandth of an inch, um, on a multi-body part you do have to specify which bodies. On a, a single body part that will already, already be automatic. And from here, just tell it to shell outward and click OK. And what you'll find is that SolidWorks basically grows the part just by the thickness of the material. What it does also do, which generally isn't acceptable in what we're trying to accomplish, is that it gets rid of the part that we shelled outward. It basically turned our part into the coating alone. So one quick step to improve that is to create a move copy body command. So that's up here in the insert, features, move copy, or my personal favorite, use the command search, just hit your S key, move copy bodies. And when you pick the body, just tell it you want to copy at one time, but don't specify any translations or rotations. In fact, I'm not sure why I have anything in here besides all zeros, but once I put in all zeros and I click OK, it's going to tell you that you're just going to copy the body and you, you say fine, that's OK. And what's great is then it will go ahead and keep that copy of the body and then when it creates the shell, you're going to end up with two separate bodies, both of them showing up. Now in a part like this, you may decide maybe I need to mask off certain parts of this. Uh, some of these mating components or mating faces are going to be masked or uh, perhaps just not covered in some way. And so in the shell command, if you want to get rid of those faces, simply grab the face you don't want to shell, click OK, and that face will get removed. And you can kind of see here if I zoom in, the part is solid, but the shell only goes around the faces that you want to worry, work with. So that works pretty well for this part. The problem is, occasionally you're going to end up with some geometry that's going to be a little bit bad and give you some trouble. So if I jump back into this one, I have another part on the other side here. And I'll just kind of as an example, go ahead and create a quick shell again, thousandth of an inch, shelling outward. And when I click OK, it's going to do an offset of all the faces in the geometry. But every once in a while, you'll get one of two things happening. The first thing that could happen, as we see on this one, is the faces somehow get extended out, but they don't knit back together and they create some crazy geometry. So in that scenario, you may need to go back in and uh, reassess what the geometry looks like. Maybe you need to manually do it, uh, you know, exclude that from the shell and, and set up something else. Um, any number of things could be going wrong there. The other thing that might happen is it might simply just fail. And a lot of times I find that when it fails, it's because there's something wrong with your geometry ahead of time. In other words, your geometry is messed up before the shell and the shell just told you how much more messed up it was going to be once we actually created it. So on the Evaluate tab, I click Check. And the Check command will go through and let me find any major problems. So for instance, on this one, no invalid faces are found before I run the surface uh, shell. But then once I do the shell, we may find that we have some inconsistencies on the faces or something like that where it's going to give us some, some issues. And if we look at where these issues occur, it kind of makes sense. We have some very tight geometry and some weird intersecting uh, faces, and these faces become inconsistent after the shell. So these issues, you know, in, in the real world that would uh, just kind of gloss over it and just fill it in, um, you'll have to address that in the geometry uh, either by modifying it slightly or changing the thickness, but uh, those are the, the things that might trip you up on certain parts. But that's how you can build a thickness of a part, add that thickness to the part, and, uh, and so you can document it in your geometry.